coming up next on Hands on Windows, we're going to take another look at screenshots and screen recordings. It's not that everything has changed in Windows 11 23H2, but there's some big changes. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Throt, and this week we're going to take a second look at screenshots and screen recordings. This was something we looked at probably last year sometime, but now in Windows 11 version 23H2, there's been some changes. Uh, key among them is historical change, if you can believe that. For the first time in the history of Windows, Microsoft has changed what the print screen button on your keyboard does, right? So up until now, what it did was copy uh, an image of the desktop or, to, or any number of desktops, if you had multiple screens, to the clipboard so that you could then paste that image into Paint or Word or whatever application um, you wanted to use. Starting with this version of Windows, though, it actually runs the snipping tool. So i got to figure out where this thing is on this keyboard. But when I hit Print Screen, you can see on the screen that uh, we've got this floating app window, and this is allowing me to trigger a uh, screenshot or screen capture or a screen recording. This is the initial um, you know, keyboard-based way to launch the snipping tool. I'm going to close that out, though. Now, if you don't like that, and I, I actually use a third-party screenshot tool, you can go into the settings app here, and if you search for print, you'll see this option comes up. It says, Use the, screen, the print screen key to open the screen capture. I mean, it, go to that, it nicely highlights it. And I turn this off on my own computers because, you know, again, I use a third party tool. I don't want it to interfere with this. But I think for most people, uh, Snipping Tool is actually a fantastic um, uh, solution for this because it does more than just uh, capture and, and go to, this, uh, to the clipboard, which is kind of weak. Um, and it gives you options for what you want to uh, capture, right? So it's kind of, it's more straightforward, I think, and obvious um, for other people. So today we're going to focus on mostly snipping tool. Uh, there'll be a little surprise from, from an old favorite at the end, but um, kind of look at the different ways we can do this. So let me do that again. I'm going to hit the print screen button and it's set to a screen capture by default or snip in the silly language of this app. And then they have these different, different modes you can do, right? You get a rectangular thing, which you would draw on the screen. You can select a window. I don't actually have a window open, but I assume I could select the taskbar as a window. Full screen, which is what I would typically do, or a freeform snip, which doesn't make a lot of sense on a mouse and keyboard system, but if you had a pen or using your finger, um, that might make some sense. So I will just click full screen. And this, it gives you this nice pop-up banner notification, right? Because you've did, done this for a, from a keyboard shortcut, you don't have an app running exactly. It's not clear what's going on with this thing. So it tells you what it did, right? So like before, it copied it to the clipboard, good. But it also saved it uh, to a file. So let's see if we can find that. And I will close you. So if I go into pictures and screenshots, um, I have all the screenshots I took before, but you can see here is the one. This is today's date. And if we open this thing up, um, there it is. Okay, and paint. So there you go. Pretty straightforward. Um, I like that functionality, honestly. Uh, I'm going to do another screenshot just so we can look at that. Actually, let me, let me launch screen, uh, Snipping Tool differently. So you can also launch it from start, right? In fact, I think it's probably a shortcut right here. But typically what you would do is search, click the app, and then you get a, a different experience, right? So again, it's a floating window as before. It's got some of the same options. It actually has some additional options. It also resizes, right? Um, in fact, you're going to want to resize it because if you go into settings, you're not going to be able to read any of it otherwise, but it has all of these uh, different options for both uh, snipping, again, screen captures, uh, screenshots as I think of them, or screen recordings. Um, for the most part, I would say these are pretty much set to the way you want them, but um, you can look through there if you want to uh, mess around with the way this thing works. So I will trigger a, let me just bring up, I'll just bring up a uh, like an app window so we can have something kind of unique to look at. I will do a window this time and click new to start. And now I select that window. And this time it opens, the, the picture it took opens in the application. So you can resize this thing and uh, access all of the editing functions. So most of this stuff is the same as it was before in previous versions of Windows. Um, there's a new edit and paint option if you did a screenshot. If you were to take a screen recording, 
there would be an edit in Clipchamp or open a Clipchamp option that would allow you to edit that thing in Microsoft's video editor. Okay, but we've done a screenshot here. Um, there is one additional tool in here, and this is for text actions. Um, this isn't a great screenshot for that type of thing. So let me do something a little different. I'm going to go into the screenshots I was just looking at. Some of these have a bunch of text, right? So I'm going to open this with snipping tool. Opens in the app. You can see it there. And this time I'm going to select text actions. So what this is, is an AI based feature that looks at the image and pulls the text, uses AI to pull the text out of it. You can do a couple of things here. Uh, we don't have to redact any email addresses or phone numbers, which is a curiously uh, sophisticated thing to do, um, but we can copy all the text to the clipboard, right? And once it's copied, we could open it in an app. I'll just use notepad. And um, as you can see here, this is the, the text, right? From that screenshot, it's pretty, it's actually pretty nice. So um, this is, uh, you know, like uh, something you might do on a phone. You take a picture of a, a sign in a store, or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, we get images on our computer, the same thing. This allows us to kind of pull that text out. So that's actually, that's pretty cool. So snipping tool also allows you to do screen captures or I'm sorry, in addition to screen captures also allows you to do screen recordings. So for that purpose, you would typically, I would typically anyway, you can do it either way, but I would bring this app up first because you kind of want to look at this, right? So you put it into that mode. You can see that these options you had with pictures are gone. So um, there's a timer. We didn't really look at that, but you can set a timer if you want to uh, have a countdown and then set the screen up exactly the way you want. Um, and you can also choose, remember the different modes, right? Windows and freeform and rectangle and so forth. Um, screen recording is going to be full screen, right? That's, that's what you're getting. So I will start this thing off, uh, and this time, I, I'm sorry, I should say it's rectangular. This time you actually choose the area, but I'll choose the whole screen by, by pulling that. And I should get a countdown. Yep, three, two, one. So I will just do a couple of basic actions here. We'll open the settings app, go to Windows Update, something going on there, close it, and 10 seconds later we have our recording. So I will stop. now. Like before, this thing appears in the app, it will resize with the app, right? As we make it bigger or small, you know, you get the thumbnail. Um, you can play this thing in line if it's exactly what you want. I guess you're good to go. Um, the question here, of course, is where did, where did it put this thing, <laughs> right? And if you look in screenshots, uh, you're going to see there is not a screen capture here. But if you look in uh, videos, oh, we haven't saved it yet, but <laughs> there will be a video once we save it. So this will save to screen captures in, in the videos folder. So I'll just actually by default, actually to save sort of videos by default, but I will, I will save it. Um, the other option you can do here is, like I said, is edit and clip champ. And that's kind of an interesting uh, point here because this is pretty basic, works fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, but clip champ has some interesting new features. Uh, that are related to screen capture that exceed what's available in Snipping Tool. So it might be interesting to go into, um, into Snipping Tool and kind of see what that looks like, right? So we, th in this case, what we've done is started a new project that has that screen recording. We're not actually going to use that screen recording. Um, not that it matters per se, but um, if you go into Record and Create, uh, you'll see some options. If you've been using... Uh, Clipchamp for a while, some of these will be very uh, familiar, but go into screen and capture. And what you get here is that kind of neat thing that you see in a lot of presenter type videos where it's going to record the screen. It's going to record you in a picture in picture. You can do a little bit of resizing here, you know, go between different sizes, but you're, you're not stuck to this exactly uh, during the recording you are, but uh, you'll see later when we edit it, you can actually move this thing around and, and, and change how that works. You're obviously going to look at the different um, uh, hardware you have on your computer. Make sure you're at the right camera, in this case, the web camera, the right uh, microphone, which in this case is just the default uh, array microphones on a laptop. You can turn on this incredible feature called Speaker Coach, which will evaluate the discussion that you're having as you talk. Well, it does it after the fact, but it will actually examine how you talk and it'll say, hey, you, you paused a lot, you said um a lot, you know, whatever it might be. But when you're ready to go, 
you click record, you choose what you want to record, right? I'm going to record the entire screen. Um, and you click share. Okay, so now it's recording. And what you would typically do is uh, basically do what I did before, right? I could go up and say, I'm going to open the start menu. I'm going to go into settings like I did before. I'm going to go to Windows Update. Really exciting. Um, I'm going to check for updates. There aren't any because I always keep my computers up to date. Um, and then I'm going to go back and stop sharing. So what it does immediately in ClipChamp is start playing back what I recorded both on the screen and in the camera with the microphone here in this picture picture thing. Um, you, I, the review speech will tell, <laughs> will tell us uh, what the speaker coach found. I say, um, too much. I use repetitive language. That sounds like me. Um, I, I was really trying to, too hard here, but um, so we'll save and edit this. And it goes into, uh, into here as two different videos, right? There's the screen capture and there is the picture in picture video, right? Now I'm going to, what I'll do is just kind of artificially, I'm going to move it forward to the part where, yeah, it looks like this. So I'm going to split both of these. This is just kind of basic um, clip champ editing here. Uh, bring that back to the front. So it's just sort of, sort of the video, if you will, that we, uh, that we did. And then uh, as you, you can scroll through it and see what's happening here. But the really cool thing is you can select what I think of as the picture in picture, the, the video of you, the presenter. You can resize it. You can move this thing around exactly to the position where you want it on screen. It gives you a little guideline. So you're not off into those areas where depending on the screen someone's using, you might not see all of the video. So that's smart helps you center it if you want to be right down in there in the middle, which would be kind of silly, but you might want that. Uh, and then you can just move this thing around and do whatever you want. You can split the video if you want to move that picture in picture. You, sometimes you might not want the picture in picture, right? Um, this is all very easy to do in ClipChamp. So this is kind of like next level screen recording. Um, the only major restriction to this is that it only lets you record for 30 minutes at a time. But I think for most people and for most purposes, that's probably fine. You're going to edit it later anyway, so you could just do another screen capture with the same picture in picture and, and, and add those two things together. So when we look at Windows 11 version 23H2, what we see is some uh, subtle changes in some ways to snipping tool, right? You get the uh, ability to edit images in uh, paint directly from the app without having to find it and so forth. Um, you get the ability to edit a screen capture, or screen recording, I should say, sorry, uh, in ClipChamp, again, directly from the app. Um, the big change with that app is that it's now the default print screen action, which is, you know, historic. It's That's never happened before. They've never changed that. Um, for screen recordings, ClipChamp has become, I mean, it's already awesome. You know that we did multiple episodes. I love this app. Um, they've really enhanced the functionality here for this kind of thing. And for, you know, for, uh, if you're make, making a presentation similar to what we do here on hands on windows, this is kind of a neat all in one package, like right on your computer. Pretty cool. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. Um, we will be back next week with a new episode. We have new episodes every Thursday. You can find out more at twit.tv slash H O W. Thank you so much. And thank you, especially to club twit members. We, uh, we need you and we appreciate you and, uh, Thank you so much. I'll see you next week. Video versions of this podcast are available to Club Twit members. You can find out more at twit.tv slash Club Twit.